Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this video, what we'll be covering are access modifiers and why you need to know them and we'll be and I'll be showing you how you can work with namespaces. But before we do that, let's review the task I had assigned you. Your task, if you remember, was to create an alien object. And this alien was supposed to be a type of struct. So let's come into our project here. And we have this player script that we created. And we're going to create one for our alien. So we'll call this alien, just like so. Now, what I've been doing is I've been keeping structs into one file name. So I would have alien to be a type of struct, but you don't necessarily have to do this. You can have your structs with your other. For instance, I could have my alien struct in my hello world. I'd have to do it outside this class, right? This class line or underneath it, but I can do it there. Typically, I'll keep my structs where I need them, where they most make sense. In this case, I'm going to keep it in a separate file. But if this alien, say I had a cl another class or struct that uses this alien struct, then I might group them together in the same file. So I'm going to call this alien. And we'll make this public. And of course, this is going to be a struct. And here we go, alien. And I mentioned that this struct should contain three fields. The first one is the point value. And I'm capitalizing it because this is a public field. The next one is hit points. And the final one is alive. And this is a type of bool. And that's it. That is my alien struct. And I'm going to return to my hello world. We're going to create an alien over here. And we're going to define it in here as well. And we're going to say that the alien is alive for sure. We're going to give it, let's say this is an alien that will explode after being shot once. And then finally, we'll say that its point value is 100. We can say that Barney shot the alien and got his points. And underneath here, we'll simply print out the values of the object. Here we go. I'm going to return back to Unity. We're going to start this up. And we're going to disable our cube in the hierarchy. And here we have our alien is alive. Its hit points is 1. And it has a point value of 100. Actually, the alive should be false because Barney shot it. But that's our own logic error, not necessarily a compile error. And we can obviously fix that by changing that to false like that. Okay, now on to access control. So far, we've been creating objects, and all these objects have had public access. But I've mentioned that objects can also have varying other degrees of access as well. It's important for you to understand this, because when you're creating objects, you necessarily do not want other objects to peek into it, per se. Let's say we have a car, and we have the car engine. You necessarily don't need to know the state of all the various components of that car engine while it's running. The engine can manage that. And in fact, if you know that state and you could actually change the state of an engine outside of it, you could destroy that engine. And the same goes true for objects. Objects knows its internal state. And to make those things public and to make those properties public means that someone could change the state of your object, which could then get itself into an unstable state, which would then create glitches throughout the rest of your programming, ultimately creating in a crash. So it's very important to guard the internal variables of your object. In fact, what we can do is make them not public at all. We can make them private. And by making them private, that means another object cannot access them. Only the object itself can access them. 
And we can see this right now. If I come back to my player here, and let's make this private, we're making the name private. Now, no one can change the name but the actual player object. Now we save this and we build it, and you'll notice we get an error right away. Right here, we're trying to assign the name, but the compiler is telling us the name is, is inaccessible due to its protection level. This name is effectively, this variable here is effectively gated. Now, if we were going to do this, what we would do then is make this lowercase because this tells us at a glance, the name variable is now, is now private. And you can see what I also did here is I moved it underneath the public variables. What I like to do is keep the public variables at the top of my variable lists, and then I move my private ones underneath it. When working with objects in particular, structs and classes will impose for you a default level of access. For instance, if I did something like this, and I removed the private declaration, I just did string name, what do you think will happen? Well, if I build and run this, you'll notice that this error doesn't fix itself. And the reason for that, by default, fields are private when working with structs and classes. Still, I find it's a good habit to put private in front of it. If you're coming from another language like Java, then variables will have a different access modifier if you don't leave this, if you don't designate a value. Meaning if I didn't declare this as private, Java would call this as default, which gives it different restrictions than what private would do. Just to be safe, always give your variables a access modifier. Now access modifiers don't necessarily come in just public and private. There's also something known as protected. And you'll be learning more about protected when you work with classes that just has to do with something called inheritance. And um, that's covered, that's, that will be covered in the next section of this video's tutorial series. After protected, we have internal. And internal means it's just limited to the current assembly. You can think of it as the current dill. But we're not working with dills in this series, so you don't necessarily, we're not going to be touching internal. And there's also, there's also protected internal. Primarily, we're going to be working with public, protected, and private. And internal and protected internal, we're not going to be messing around with. Protected internal, by the way, means it's limited to just the current assembly and types derived from that object that is protected internal. Again, we're not working with assemblies. We're working all within Unity. But it may come into play when you're incorporating other dills into your Unity game. But again, that's way beyond the scope of this series. For now, we're going to keep our fields as being public so that we can access them. In, in later videos, I'm going to show you how you can protect them, how you can make them private, but still have outside objects interface with them. And this is what we call encapsulation. Now let's move into another topic. And this is related to access modifiers, and this is called namespaces. Okay, what are namespaces? Well, let's think of this. We have an alien object here. We've defined this, we've given it certain values and so forth. But what happens if we incorporate code from another project? Say we found something awesome in GitHub and we bring it into our Unity project. And it also has a class called, or a struct called alien. What do you think would happen? We have two structs named alien. Well, the compiler won't know what to use. Can it use one or the other? And what will happen is that we'll get a compiler error because it can't determine which alien is the alien being referenced in your code. It doesn't know which is to use my version of the alien or the new version of the alien that I imported. Well, to get around this, we have the concept of a namespace. And a namespace allows us to create our own objects without worrying about this type of collision. And this is what is called a namespace collision. Two objects have the same name and they're, they're trying to interact or they're trying to work in the same space. And, and C Sharp can't determine a winner. So it just basically says, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm, this is a compiler. So we cr use namespaces to get around that. The way we do this is through the namespace keyword. I'm going to open up player here. And you can see here, we've defined the player. We've defined the struct. 
And before that, I'm going to use, the, as I mentioned, the keyword namespace. And I'm going to give it my company name, which we'll say beginning.csharp. And you can look up the style guides for how to use this. And I'm going to put an open brace, and then I'm going to put a closing brace. And I'm going to put my object inside of it. Now, this object player is contained within the namespace beginning.csharp. And if I want to access it, I would do beginning.csharp.player, like so. And if I want to access it, I would need to access the full namespace. Let's build my project now. And you can notice we have an error. And this is because the type or namespace name player could not be found. This is no longer in the default realm of my project. It's now incorporated. My player object is incorporated within a namespace. The way for me to access my namespace now is to use beginning.csharp. And you can see how this will work. Before I have my player, we'll put it right here. I'm going to type beginning.csharp, like so, dot player. And now it's player one, like that. My object is now being fully qualified with the namespace. And you can see we have another object, another error here. I'm saying I want it to be a new player. It doesn't know what the player is, so I'm going to copy this over here. And I'm again, I'm what we're again, I'm fully qualifying my object. Here we have our name. Here it's not private anymore, so we'll just build that. I'm not too sure why it's not finding the name field here. If I do name like this, okay, that's why I lowercased it. And now I'll build this. And you can see here, we're able to work with this and we're using the fully qualified namespace. This can be very cumbersome when working with namespaces, as you can see. And there's a shortcut to doing this, and that's by using the using keyword. You see above here, we're using the Unity engine. We're getting access to all the objects within the Unity engine. By using system collections, we're getting access to all the objects within the system collections namespace. Now by accessing, accessing beginning.csharp, I now get access to all the objects within that namespace as well. So if I come here and I delete this, and I delete this as well, you'll see that's like a shortcut. And now I no longer have to fully qualify this object with that namespace. You'll be doing this a lot when working with Unity, for instance, when using the, the new UI tools. You'll be using, for instance, using Unity Engine here, and you'll do .UI, like so. And now you gain access to all the UI tools. For instance, we're looking for a text to, we're looking for the text object. And if I type text here, you'll see it's not available to me. But if I come over here and type using Unity Engine.ui, I now have access to this text object. I can type text, and there it is. And same with collections. We'll be covering collections in another section in this series but we specifically need access to the generic collection. So we put collections.generic like that, and we get access to all those. Using namespaces is really important to understand exactly how you can manage your code so you can ultimately avoid namespace collisions. Okay, that's the end of this episode. For your task, what I want you to do is put a namespace around your alien object. It doesn't, you can call it whatever you want, but I want you to encapsulate it within a namespace and then reference it in your Hello World script. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. And well, if you liked it, feel free to give me a thumbs up as well. In the next video, we're going to be covering methods. And this is where you can make your objects actually do something. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching. And I will see you in the next video. See you then.